It's finally March, and both Temple basketball teams are headed to the big dance. Owl Sports Update starts now. Welcome to this special March Madness edition of Al Sports Update. I'm, no I'm Noel Roby alongside Jillian Marshall. Temple's men's and women's basketball teams are both traveling more than 2,000 miles to compete in the first round of the NCAA tournament. That's right, March Madness is finally here. But for the men, it took some hard work to get there, which included a shot at history in Atlantic City. Joe Polinski is in the newsroom with a recap of the Atlantic 10 tournament. Hi, Joe. Hey, ladies. Yeah, it was a pretty deep tournament this year, with Xavier, Richmond, Rhode Island, and even Dayton challenging the Owls. Temple came into the tournament as the number two seed and a first-round bye. In the quarterfinals, the, Owl, the Owls had an easy time with LaSalle winning by 20, 96-76, but the question remained, would they be caught in a spider web come game two in the semifinal round? Early in the first half, Al's down by two in transition. Ramon Moore drives up and hits. Later in the half, Al's play a little tic-tac-toe with Leo Jefferson to Juan Fernandez to Khalif Wyatt, who buries the three. Al's were like Hellman's. They were bringing out the best from behind the arc, draining seven three balls in the contest. Al's drive again, more dishes to TJ DeLeo, but Justin Harper says, eh, eh denying the Al's. The ball comes out to Fernandez at the buzzer. He says, in the face, draining the long ball. But every time the Temple went on a mini run, the Spiders answered back. D'Angelo passes to Justin Harper, who buries a three of his 18. It's a one-point game. Second half, Al's down one until Fernandez dishes to Moore for the easy layup, putting the carry in white up by one. But that was about it. In the second half, Temple just didn't make many shots. 31% from the field to be exact. Richmond ends the Owls' 8-10 tournament run with a 58-54 victory. Hard-fought game. I was proud of our guys throughout. I was proud that we, we went down a little bit and then came back, found a way to, to take a, a one-point lead with five minutes to go, I think, and then... Uh, it was just one of the, we had three or four possessions that we were a little bit hurried on. We just, we just got to forget about this game, you know, uh, you know, I think we, uh, we got to share the ball more and you know, just play the way we, that we've been playing all year long and you know, just got to get back to what, the way we were playing and you know, I think we'll be okay. Uh, for the boy, uh... Shot 52% from the field, forcing 22 turnovers in their blowout win over LaSalle, but it was the opposite in the semis versus Richmond. Fernandez was just 3 for 17 from the field. More on that in a minute. The Atlantic City winning streak ends at 10. And a little FYI, Richmond did go on to beat Dayton 67-54 for its first Atlantic 10 championship. Back to you. Thanks, Joe. Continuing our AL team coverage, our reporter Josh Waltenberg took an in-depth look at what went wrong this past weekend in the game against Rick Richmond. Then Dan Koob will explore the winning streak in Atlantic City that's out of the Concedo and on the court. The Owls fell short in winning their fourth straight Atlantic 10 title was the performance of Juan Fernandez. It was just one of those games and personally the ball wasn't going in and tried to do some other things but you know, it wasn't enough to be in obviously. Head coach Fran Dunphy assessed Juan's play after the loss to Richmond. He knows there's some things his point guard could have done differently but one thing he shouldn't change at all. He had a couple tough shots at the basket that uh, I'm sure he would change if he could, but uh, 10 assists is very good, and he's a terrific player. In the Owls 58-54 loss to the Richmond Spiders, Juan Fernandez had a poor shooting performance. He went 3-for-17 from the field and just 1-for-7 from beyond the arc. But despite all that, the Owls and their head coach still have plenty of confidence in the Argentinian sharpshooter. He tried to make some plays, and unfortunately he didn't shoot the ball well, but you know some of those shots usually go in, so... No, we're not really worried about that. I'll trust in Juan Fernandez with the ball anytime. And there's no time for sulking for number four. Temple's in the NCAA tournament, and they face Penn State. Fernandez hopes there's still light at the end of the tunnel for his team, despite the poor showing in the conference championships. Hopefully, 
you know, after a week or two, I can say that we didn't win the A-10 championship this year, but we definitely made a run in the tournament, which we haven't done. Reporting for Al Sports, I'm Josh Rotenberg. I'm Dan Koob. Temple had won 10 consecutive games at Boardwalk Hall. When the Owls made their yearly migration to the coast this year, they took on the Richmond Spiders in a conference tournament semifinal matchup. Short, and it's over. Temple's run of Atlantic 10 tournament titles is history. It's Richmond moving on to the championship round to face Dayton. The loss to the Spiders ended an unprecedented run in Atlantic 10 tournament play. I mean, we just the plan was just to play as much as we can. I mean, just didn't turn out that way. Their inability to score down the stretch in the semifinal matchup doomed their chance at another championship. So how different will this be going into the tournament as an at-large bid as opposed to a conference champion? I guess we're going to find out. But the team is confident that this conference loss will turn into tournament wins. Hopefully, you know, after a week or two, I can say that we didn't win the A-10 championship this year, but we definitely made a run in the tournament, which we haven't done. You know, he's going to try to go out there and you know, just, just win. You know, it doesn't matter if we would have won, this, won the championship this year or not. You know, he's going to play the same way. The Owls lost for the first time in Boardwalk Hall since 2007. They'll try to claim that elusive first tournament victory under head coach Fran Dunphy. For Owl Sports Update, I'm Dan Coog. Despite the Atlantic 10 loss in Atlantic City, the Owls were welcomed home with a celebration, but it was also an anxious time as the players and coaches played the waiting game when it came to the NCAA selection show. Updates Josh Filomino explains. Election Sunday, and for the fourth straight year, Temple sat and waited to hear their school's name to come up. But there was one thing very different this year than in recent past. Jefferson, short, and it's over. Temple's run of Atlantic 10 tournament titles is history. It's Richmond. Unlike the last three years, Temple came into Selection Sunday without an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament, which left the team with mixed feelings. Tremendous angst uh, whether or not your name is going to be called. And as much as somebody else can tell you that you're in, you don't ever believe that until you see your name on that on that board. You know, I definitely came in here and sat down there um, waiting to see our name sooner rather than later. Then the moment they were waiting for finally came. <laughs> After about a 30-minute wait, the men were awarded the seventh seed. They'll take on the 10th seeded Penn State Nittany Lions in the West Region in Tucson, Arizona. Temple will attempt to win a game in the Big Dance for the first time since 2001. And the entire team is in agreement on how to notch a victory in the opening round. Play our best game. It starts on defense for us as it's always been. And and you know have the, the more experienced guys bringing their air game to, to the court. In order for us to win a game, we have to play great defense, make great decisions on offense, and we have to make our share of shots. Thanks, Josh. Seventh seed at Temple will be competing against 10th seed Penn State in Tucson, Arizona Thursday afternoon. If the Cherry and White beat the Blue and White, they'll stay in Tucson and face the winner of second seed San Diego State versus 15th seed University of Northern Colorado. The Owls haven't made it past the first round dating back to 2001. We have a crew out in Tucson covering the men's team. Next week's show will be filled with updates and breakdowns of how the Owls did. But even before making their first shot, updates Josh Rotenberg found a fan who has already seen much more than he ever bargained for. Yeah! Shane Stern is a 37-year-old man. One of his favorite things to do is watch wrestling. However, there's something he loves more than anything else, Temple basketball. When Temple comes up, that's his, that's his yeah, team. Not much. But there's one thing that separates Shane from the average fan. He was born with Down syndrome. As we interviewed him, it was tough to understand and comprehend the words he was using, but he made sure he was loud and clear. Uh, 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 You're going to uh, win the whole thing? Are they going to win the whole thing? Oh, okay. National championship? National championship. Bob Stern is Shane's dad. He was a former Temple professor before he moved his family out to Tucson. Now, he assists Shane with his communication and helps to reinforce his son's points. Show them how they're going to win. Tell me how they're going to win. Stand up and show me. Yeah, tell me. Show, yeah, you can stand up. Show me how they have to play defense. 
They gotta keep their hands. That's the critical thing. Yeah. Is that what go. they have to do? Yeah. Hands up. Hey up. Shane loves all the basketball players, but he's made a closer connection with two of Temple's head coaches, John Chaney and Fran Dunphy. I can't remember the exact moment, actually. It was a gradual thing, but uh, an incredibly close friendship, but a very cordial relationship. I, you know, I talk to him probably a couple times a year, and uh, it, that's just a good family who cares so much about Temple. You can find any number of Temple fans in the city of Philadelphia, but their most passionate and loyal fan may be right here in Tucson, Arizona. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Josh Rotenberg. Stay tuned, you've seen the men, now on to the women. We'll show you the triple threat heading to Salt Lake City. We'll also sit down with one of Temple's 1,000 point scorers, who says the women's team didn't get what it was expecting on Selection Monday. Our sports update will be right back. Pull your face mask down. All right, what about the chest guard? It looks loose, is it loose? All right, what about the shin guards? All right, okay, here comes the heat. Bring it in. Bring it in. Good hustle. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes. And most of us, and most of will, us go will go pro, go pro in something, something other, than, other sports. than sports. In something other than sports. To learn more, go to NCAA.org. Why not? I want we all know. Yeah, How's everybody Can't doing start. tonight? Hello. Chrissy, hey. Hey, Alex. How are you? <laughs> Alex? Alex, Alex? Oh. Hello. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Garcia. We've heard a lot about you. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. The Owls didn't have to wait long to hear their name being called during Monday's show. The Owls were awarded the 10th seed in the Dayton region. They take on Arizona State, State in Salt Lake City, Utah. This is the eighth straight season that the women are participating in the NCAA tournament. The women's team wasn't too surprised to be seeing its name on the board, but there was one surprise, the seed. The Owls were projected by many to be a, the seventh seed. Instead, they're the 10th seed in the Dayton region, playing the seventh seed. Last year, the Owls won their first round game before being bounced eventually by the national champion, UConn, in the second round. This year, despite the seed, there seems to be more of optimism. I think it's a good matchup for us. I think that um, it's definitely definitely a winnable game for us. Um, the seed in 10, though, I think it's a misrepresentation of how we played. I think we should have actually been the seventh seed, but as far as playing Arizona State, I'm excited for it. I feel like we're gonna, we're gonna play a good game and possibly come out with that win. Junior forward Kristen McCarthy has broken two records while at Temple and still has another year left. Before McCarthy and the rest of Cardoza's squad travel to Salt Lake City, I sat down with her to talk about her future expectations. Once they showed our name, I was relieved that we were in the tournament. Definitely getting a 10 seed is kind of disappointing. I felt like we deserved higher than that. But in, in saying that, I definitely think we have to just prove ourselves to show that we do deserve a higher seed and that we are a better team. Everybody is not going to get the seed that they want, but as long as you play up to your potential, then you can just prove everyone wrong. I'm excited. I think we're going to do well. The fact that we got a 10 seed is more motivation for us to come out and prove ourselves. And all of our team is excited. We have some experience under our belt for people that have been to the tournament. There's a few people that haven't been yet, but I'm excited, and I definitely think we're going to do very well. We know who else is in our bracket. I definitely think it's a winnable bracket. We're a great team, and... If we just start everything with our defense, it'll translate to our offense. I definitely think we could at least make it to the Sweet 16. That's at least. Not one or two, but three women's basketball players have broken records this season. Senior Quita Wallace, junior Shay Petty, and junior Kristen McCarthy have all passed the 1,000-point plateau in 2011. Owl Sports reporter Kyle Fisher has more on Temple's triple threat. 
How aware coming into the season were you guys that you were actually getting close to that milestone? I didn't know how close I was, but as it approached, like, you know, people were telling me, oh, you're however many points away. Yeah, me neither. I think probably like three games and like, oh, you need like 70 points or 40 points. And then I was like, oh, I didn't realize I was that close. About three or four games before, you know, all my uh, friends and family are just letting me know that I'm getting close and trying to encourage me. <laughs> Shay, is, now, is Shay, is like her thousand point milestone not as cool because you guys did it all here? Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> even matter. Just like, like, well, 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 it's just not counting. A thousand sure. what? No. <laughs> Now, you said you, you ran track for, for a long time, but then basketball just kind of took over. So are you the fastest on the team, or um, I, do you think you could beat everybody else in a foot race? I think so, in a, in a foot race. If not basketball, then what would you want to do Boxer. for a career? Boxer. Boxer. I want to be the next Layla Ali. <laughs> <laughs> so are you the toughest on the team? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty tough, pretty tough. When it comes to game time, is there anything like you guys have your iPods? What is it that really gets you pumped up right before the game? I listen to Nicki Minaj. Uh, excuse you. Um, Nick anything the band that I... <laughs> <laughs> I like to see Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, uh, R&B, slow song. Well, Noel, I don't know about you, but I know that I'm definitely the toughest one here at Owl Sports. You're looking pretty tough there, Jill. <laughs> it's time to go in the nest. Senior forward Lavoy Allen has been, has been invited to participate in the NABC All-Star Game, and junior Ramon Moore has, was named to the All-District Second Team. The All-Star Game will take place on Friday, April 1st, at Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas. And it's just her third year at Temple, and Coach Tanya Cardoza was named the Atlantic 10 Women's Basketball Coach of the Year. She has led the Owls in their seventh straight NCAA tournament and, in, and their third consecutive season with 20 or more wins. And speaking of Coach Cardoza, she's getting tech savvy. The accomplished coach and her assistant head coach, Wei Vini, are now on Twitter. That's going to be it for this special March Madness edition of Owl Sports. All Sports Update for Noel Roby and the rest of the All Sports team. I'm Jillian Marshall. Thanks for watching.